The Fertile Crescent, also known as the Cradle of Civilization, is a crescent-shaped region where agriculture and early human civilizations like the Sumer and ancient Egypt flourished due to inundations from the surrounding Nile, Euphrates, and Tigris rivers. Technological advances in the region include the development of writing, glass, the wheel, agriculture, and the use of irrigation. Modern-day countries with significant territory within the Fertile Crescent are Iraq, Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, Cyprus, Jordan, Israel, Egypt, as well as the southeastern fringe of Turkey and the western fringes of Iran. The term is also used in international geopolitics and diplomatic relations. Terminology The term, "...fertile crescent", was popularized by archaeologist James Henry Breasted in Outlines of European History and Ancient Times, A History of the Early World Breasted wrote, this fertile crescent is approximately a semicircle, with the open side toward the south, having the west end at the southeast corner of the Mediterranean, the center directly north of Arabia, and the east end at the north end of the Persian Gulf see map, p. 100. It lies like an army facing south, with one wing stretching along the eastern shore of the Mediterranean and the other reaching out to the Persian Gulf, while the center has its back against the northern mountains. The end of the western wing is Palestine, Assyria makes up a large part of the center, while the end of the eastern wing is Babylonia. This great semicircle, for lack of a name, may be called the Fertile Crescent. Point one. It may also be likened to the shores of a desert bay, upon which the mountains behind look down a bay not of water but of sandy waste, some 800 kilometers across, forming a northern extension of the Arabian Desert and sweeping as far north as the latitude of the northeast corner of the Mediterranean. This desert bay is a limestone plateau of some height, too high indeed to be watered by the Tigris and Euphrates, which have cut canyons obliquely across it. Nevertheless, after the meager winter rains, wide tracts of the northern desert bay are clothed with scanty grass, and spring thus turns the region for a short time into grasslands. The history of Western Asia may be described as an age-long struggle between the mountain peoples of the north and the desert wanderers of these grasslands, a struggle which is still going on, for the possession of the Fertile Crescent, the shores of the Desert Bay. Point one: There is no name, either geographical or political, which includes all of this great semicircle. See map p. 100. Hence, we are obliged to coin a term and call it the Fertile Crescent. In current usage, the Fertile Crescent includes Israel, Palestine, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan, as well as the surrounding portions of Turkey and Iran. Water sources include the Jordan River. The inner boundary is delimited by the dry climate of the Syrian desert to the south. Around the outer boundary are the Anatolian highlands to the north, the Sahara Desert to the west and the Iranian plateau to the east. Biodiversity and climate as crucial as rivers and marshlands were to the rise of civilization in the Fertile Crescent, they were not the only factor. The area is geographically important as the bridge between Africa and Eurasia, which has allowed it to retain a greater amount of biodiversity than either Europe or North Africa, where climate changes during the Ice Age led to repeated extinction events when ecosystems became squeezed against the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. The Saharan pump theory posits that this Middle Eastern land bridge was extremely important to the modern distribution of Old World flora and fauna, including the spread of humanity. The area has borne the brunt of the tectonic divergence between the African and Arabian plates and the converging Arabian and Eurasian plates, which has made the region a very diverse zone of high snow-covered mountains. The Fertile Crescent had many diverse climates, and major climatic changes encouraged the evolution of many R type annual plants, which produce more edible seeds than K type perennial plants. The region's dramatic variety in elevation gave rise to many species of edible plants for early experiments in cultivation. Most importantly, the Fertile Crescent was home to the eight Neolithic founder crops important in early agriculture i.e., wild progenitors to emmer wheat, einkorn, barley, flax, chickpea, pea, lentil, bitter vetch, and four of the five most important species of domesticated animals. Cows, goats, sheep, and pigs, the fifth species, the horse, lived nearby. The fertile crescent flora comprises a high percentage of plants that can self-pollinate, but may also be cross-pollinated. These plants, called selfers, 
were one of the geographical advantages of the area because they did not depend on other plants for reproduction. History as well as possessing many sites with the skeletal and cultural remains of both pre-modern and early modern humans e.g., at Tabun and S. School Caves in Israel, later Pleistocene hunter-gatherers, and Epipaleolithic semi-sedentary hunter-gatherers the, the Fertile Crescent is most famous for its sites related to the origins of agriculture. The western zone around the Jordan and Upper Euphrates rivers gave rise to the first known Neolithic farming settlements referred to as Pre-Pottery Neolithic A PPNA, which date to around 9000 BCE and include sites such as Gobekli Tepe and Jericho. This region, alongside Mesopotamia which lies to the east of the Fertile Crescent, between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, also saw the emergence of early complex societies during the succeeding Bronze Age. There is also early evidence from the region for writing and the formation of hierarchical state-level societies. This has earned the region the nickname, the Cradle of Civilization. It is in this region where the first libraries appeared, some 5,000 years ago. The oldest known library was found in northern Syria, in the ruins of Ebla, a major commercial center that was destroyed around 1650 BCE. Both the Tigris and Euphrates start in the Taurus Mountains of what is modern-day Turkey. Farmers in southern Mesopotamia had to protect their fields from flooding each year, except northern Mesopotamia which had just enough rain to make some farming possible. To protect against flooding, they made levees. Since the Bronze Age, the region's natural fertility has been greatly extended by irrigation works, upon which much of its agricultural production continues to depend. The last two millennia have seen repeated cycles of decline and recovery as past works have fallen into disrepair through the replacement of states, to be replaced under their successors. Another ongoing problem has been salination—gradual concentration of salt and other minerals in soils with a long history of irrigation. <laughs> Early domestications Prehistoric seedless figs were discovered at Gilgal I in the Jordan Valley, suggesting that fig trees were being planted some 11,400 years ago. Cereals were already grown in Syria as long as 9,000 years ago. Small cats also were domesticated in this region. Languages <inaudible> 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 Linguistically, the Fertile Crescent was a region of great diversity. Historically, Semitic languages generally prevailed in the lowlands, whilst in the mountainous areas to the east and north a number of generally unrelated languages were found including Elamite, Kassite, and hurro urartian The precise affiliation of these, and their date of arrival, remain topics of scholarly discussion. However, given lack of textual evidence for the earliest era of prehistory, this debate is unlikely to be resolved in the near future. The evidence which does exist suggests that by the 3rd millennium BCE and into the 2nd, several language groups already existed in the region. These included Nok languages, Caucasian languages 10,000 BC 8 Proto-Euphratian language, a non-Semitic language considered to be the substratum language of the people that introduced farming into southern Iraq in the early Ubaid period 5300-4700 BC. Sumerian, a non-Semitic language which displays a Sprachbund-type relationship with neighboring Akkadian Semitic languages, Akkadian, Amorite, Aramaic, Ugaritic, Canaanite. hurro urartian languages, a small family, the otherwise isolated Kassite language may be related Hattic, a language isolate, spoken originally in central Anatolia. Indo-European languages, generally believed to be later intrusive languages, such as Hittite and the Indo-Aryan material attested in the Mitanni civilization, links between hurro urartian and Hattic and the indigenous languages of the Caucasus have frequently been suggested, but are not generally accepted. See also Hilly flanks History of Mesopotamia History of Agriculture Hydraulic Empire Beth Narain Notes and references Topic. 
Topic: Bibliography. Topic. Topic: External links. Topic. Ancient Fertile Crescent Almost Gone, satellite images show, from National Geographic News, May 18, 2001.